he didn't see Elizabeth waiting there. Or the tuba player on her flatbed. And he didn't hear the tuba playing. Where could the tuba player be, Thomas moaned. Elizabeth took the tuba player all the way to the mill. There you are, young man, she puffed. Trevor will take you from here. The tuba player thanked Elizabeth and climbed aboard Trevor. Trevor chugged slowly down the lane. Thomas kept on looking. But the island was very big, and the tuba player was very small. Thomas looked behind freight cars. And called into coaches. He raced along the main line, tooting all the way, but it didn't help. Where was the tuba player? Thomas raced into the yard. Percy was coming the other way. Whoa! Thomas bumped straight into Percy and the fun thing flew up into the air. Percy's freight cars came off the track and so did Thomas. You've spilt my bunting, moaned Percy. I'll never find the tuba player now, groaned Thomas. Harvey arrived to put Thomas back on track. How did you get into this mess, he boomed. I was looking for the tuba player, moaned Thomas. Look and listen, Harvey said thoughtfully. If he's a tuba player, he might be playing his tuba. So Thomas took his time, and he listened very carefully. Then he heard it, the sound of a tuba playing in the distance. Trevor was chugging happily down the lane. He was enjoying the tuba player's music. Thomas pulled up. He was pleased to see the tuba player. I've been looking for you everywhere, he puffed. With the tuba player safely on board, Thomas steamed off to Maithwaite as fast as he could. Thomas arrived at the party just in time. The band played beautifully. Lady Hat was very happy. It was the best birthday party ever.
All the engines on the island of Sodor look forward to harvest festival time. But most of all, they look forward to Sir Topham Hatt's harvest firework display. Sir Topham Hatt came to see Thomas and James. James, you are to collect the fireworks from the depot. James was overjoyed. Thomas wasn't happy at all. But I wanted to collect the fireworks, Thomas pouted. Sir Topham Hatt chose me because I'm as red as a rocket and twice as grand. James steamed proudly across the countryside. Brightest and best, brightest and best, he hummed happily to himself. He was having a wonderful day. Thomas was still upset when he arrived at the shunting yards. Bother James, he grouched, and he biffed the troublesome trucks crossly around the yard. When James arrived at the depot, he was very excited. The freight cars were all ready for him, filled safely to the top with fireworks. James was coupled up with the precious cargo, and he steamed away. Thomas shunted the last truck crossly into place. The troublesome trucks were glad that job was finished. Oh! James happily steamed along. He was thinking about the fireworks. He was imagining all the sparkles, flashes, and shooting stars when suddenly there was a loud noise. And James ground to a halt. I will have to go and call for help, said his driver. Thomas puffed back into Knapford Station as Gordon was letting off his passengers. Children and grown-ups from all over the island had come to see the fireworks. Seeing the children cheered Thomas up, but Sir Topham Hatt looked concerned. James has broken down, he said. You must collect him, Thomas, and bring him back, or the fireworks display will be canceled. Oh, no, cried Thomas. Then all the children will be sad. And he set off to collect James. Thomas puffed across the countryside. Even with his light on, Thomas knew he had to be very careful. Thomas found James broken down on the track. Hello, busted boiler, teases Thomas. You don't look very useful now. James was upset. 